الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. First of all, I just want to uh, thank you for for this great honor and opportunity that you gave me a chance to get to know my brothers and maybe even sisters in in Japan and to learn something about our beautiful religion. Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran said, "إنما يخشى الله من عباده العلماء." This is this is a wonderful, great ayah to motivate us and to give us purpose. Why should we seek knowledge and understand our beautiful religion? See, Allah in the Quran said, people who fear Allah are the people who are knowledgeable. Ahlul ilm. These are the people who are going to fear Allah. Why? Because once you know Allah and the more you know Allah, the more you love Allah and the more you fear Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ, and in another hadith, the Prophet, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal يقول يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات. See, Allah said, He will raise the people who believe ranks. They will become high ranks, the people who believe. But then He said, والذين أوتوا العلم, and the people who have knowledge, they have even higher ranks. No doubt, because in with علم comes action and with action comes reward and that's why in the hadith the prophet والسلام, said in a hadith man yuridillahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fi din if allah wants goodness in you he wants khair for you you will understand or you will be knowledgeable about islam and about religion brothers and sisters even today if you look at the world what is what if we look at the Muslim Ummah, the Muslim Ummah today, there are many of the Muslims, they don't know what Islam is. They have lost, they have been slowly or gradually being detached from the Islamic concept in how to live life, how to worship Allah, how to deal with a brother, how to deal with a sister, how to nurture yourself, deal with yourself, many things about Islam. And Allah Azza wa subhanAllah, today, we look at the whole world, not only Muslims. First, we see the majority of humans are non-Muslims. Then we come, we drill it down to Muslims. Then within Muslims, there are Muslims who are not practicing. And then within these practicing Muslims, maybe there are Muslims who are practicing in the wrong way. And then there are the Muslims who are practicing in the right way, in the proper manner. Subhanallah, what, in what category are we, do we fall into? And why should we, one of the other reasons why we should seek knowledge and understand our religion is because our purpose, because it fulfills our purpose in life. You are in Japan and I'm in the UAE and there are people who travel the world to make a living. And this is permissible. As a matter of fact, Allah Azza wa Jal told you to live life and to establish a good well-being and a good life and to marry and to also propose or, or provide a good life for your family and your children and for yourself before that, of course. But the main and ultimate purpose in this life, Allah answered this question in one ayah. And let's not forget that. Indeed, I have created, Allah have created jinn, and humans and mankind to worship, ultimately to worship. Then everything else drills down, everything else is branched. Ayyub, this worship, do we, do we mean that Allah wants this worship from us? He needs this worship from us? The answer is no, Allah does not need your worship. Allah created this worship so that you can worship Allah so that you benefit from this worship. Wallahi, wallahi, you benefit from this worship. And if we fix, that relationship between us and Allah, not only we will get the reward in the hereafter because we are Muslims, we believe that in 60, 70, 80, 90 years we're going to live a good life, inshallah. After that, there will be a stop sign. There will be an end date. Everything in life, this whole earth and whoever is in it is going to stop one day. If after we stop, what's going to happen? And this is what we believe in, that this life is a transit. It's a transit. Just like we work, and after work, it work ends, and you have to go back home. 
Even this life, this is where you have to work and then you have to go back home. Where is home? Home is not here. Home is in Jannah. Home in the hereafter with Allah. That's why we know that Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, our prophet, he was in Jannah. He wasn't in, in this earth. But of course, you know the story, how it happened and how Adam alayhi salam, the shaitan tricked him. And then we are here today because we are here living as a test. Allah is testing us. Who is the good and who is the bad? And how do we differentiate? One of the main things how we differentiate from good and bad is ilm. Islam, you definitely will know the way. And that's why in the hadith, the Prophet said, Man salaka tariqan yatlubu fihi ilman salaka Allahu bihi tariqan ila al-jannah. When you want to take a path that you want to know who is Allah and what is his do's and don'ts and what is sunnah and what is Quran and what is all this, then Allah will create or will make it easy for you to have a journey to read Jannah. But brothers and sisters, before anything, before even ilm, we have to be mindful of something very, very important. Is that before ilm, we have to have good intention and we have to be sincere to Allah that our existence, and we have to confirm this in our hearts, that our existence today in this world is because of Allah and for the sake of Allah. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِ my life and my death and my rituals and my work and my all this is for Allah. This is in the Quran. So the first thing is that we have to have the niyyah that all this is for Allah, not for anything else. Now I'm seeking knowledge and I'm sitting here and I'm taking the time and I know you guys have finished work and you're tired and you're sleepy. Maybe you haven't had dinner. But what makes you sit here and spend this time here with Faris, your brother from the UAE, and listen to him because you want to benefit. Benefit in what? In your company, in your work? No, you want to benefit something so you can apply it. So Allah is pleased with us. And inshallah, this is an investment for the akhirah, for the Jannah. And subhanallah, when we contemplate in these things, number one, it's something that is maybe at the beginning, it's a bit hard. And it's tough, but wallahi, wallahi, once you get to know and you make that wheel of knowledge move, then you will enjoy it. There is a beauty and sweetness into knowing and learning about Islam. Because intrinsically, you know that you are getting something or you're gonna get something out of it. Not only your feeling and your psychological well-being, no, but also you know that Allah is pleased with you. And when you know when your, your Lord is pleased with you, you are also pleased. That's number one. Number two is that once you get to know Islam and you get to know all the stuff and, and, and your uh, knowledge in your, is, uh, in your religion, once you apply it, it will also change your life. Because you apply it in, this, in, in your daily life with you dealing with your family, with your children, with your colleagues, with your brothers in the masjid. So this is also another thing that, that we, that we uh, are investing in and what we are gaining in. And also, in and seeking knowledge, the ulama said in today, huh? today's life, today's modern life, it is like, it is not even like, it is better than jihad fi sabilillah. It is better than jihad fi sabilillah. They say, why? Why this great honor of ilm? The answer is very simple. Because the demand is so high. And because there is so much ignorance, there's so much uninformation about Islam. Not only that, there is also negative information about Islam. Today you see some media, some people, they're trying to make shape Islam, our beautiful religion, that it is an extreme religion, it is a bad religion, it is a religion of backwards, it will not make you live, it will restrict you from living a good life. Allahu Akbar. Islam is the religion that teaches how to live a good life actually, not a bad life, a good happy life. 
And so that's why the ulama, they said, when you seek knowledge and you gain knowledge, this is even better than jihad. This is one of the greatest acts of worship you can do. But remember, like I said, if you do, the, if you do it and you seek knowledge for the sake of Allah, because brothers and sisters, today, even seeking knowledge in Islam can be misused. People sometimes they seek knowledge in Islam to gain money or authority or fame or a, a reputation because Islam is a powerful thing. And if you misuse it, you can misuse it. And we've seen that many, many things. We have seen it, uh, live examples of people gaining knowledge, gaining knowledge. Why? To mislead people. To mislead people and to confuse people about Islam. So we are not here for this. We are here to correct ourselves and to apply Islam in our lives to be better people. And inshallah to gain Jannah in the hereafter. Also, as a matter of fact, once you understand what your religion is, you will quickly notice that Allah is all merciful. How? Yahya Allah Azza wa Jal sent us a book that is unaltered, perfect from 1,443 years. This book has never, never been changed. And this book has a guide to life. Guide to life. It is medicine for your heart. And it is medicine for your stress. And it is answers and solutions for many things in life. In life. Whether it's a money problem, whether it's a wife problem, whether it's a children problem, whether it's a political problem, whether it's a social problem, any problem in life, wallahi, wallahi, if you read the Quran with your with your brain and in your heart, you will find the answer to it. And I'm, I'm sure that many of you guys, many of you brothers, once you read the Quran, and if you have a bit of knowledge, and once you understand these ayahs, and you start interacting with these ayahs, wallah, you feel, you feel something that is like cold water on your heart. You feel cool, you feel at ease, you feel happy from inside. That's number one. So Allah did not leave us misguided, without any answers and any solutions and answers to our questions. So Allah gave us the Quran and Allah gave us the Sunnah, which is with us until today. Tens and hundreds of thousands of what the Prophet ﷺ said and instructed and guided in everything in life. Even when you go to the bathroom and how you go to the bathroom and you know finish your business, the Prophet even taught us about that. So we have the database, we have the information, and I know many of you are IT people, so maybe some of my terminology we, you can relate to. So you have the source of information, and we have the means. We are Muslims, we want to learn, we have that thirst for knowledge. So what's stopping us? Side things are stopping us. Oh, I'm busy. Oh, I don't know where to look. I don't know what's this. Or maybe you're not interested. Or maybe it's difficult. So all these things will make you, it'll be obstacles for you to understand and learn your religion. But wallahi, like I said at the beginning, and I have to stress about this. Once a person has sincerity to Allah, Allah will guide you. He will open doors for you. You don't know how, but he will open doors for you. And wallahi, I was touched by the story of uh, Dr. Abdullah Baba, how he told me about how this mosque was established. It's wonderful how Allah opened these opportunities and doors for you guys in Tokyo, in a non-Islamic, non-religious country, that this is a op great opportunity. Now you have a mosque, and alhamdulillah, now we are meeting, and we're going to discuss things about Islam and learn about Islam. So this is a wonderful blessings of Allah. And wallahi, by the way, this is not because of the money that you collected and funded. No. This is because before that, be I am dead sure that this is because of a dua and a sincere heart. Because if, it, if you didn't have those two, nobody will find you and nobody will help you with this mosque. So we have to be wary of this. Now, when we come to knowledge, what are we gonna talk about? And what are we gonna learn, inshallah, every, every Tuesday at 9 p.m. in Tokyo time? See, Islam is an ocean of knowledge. There is hadith knowledge, there is fiqh knowledge, there is Quran knowledge, there is tajweed knowledge, there is usul knowledge, 
there are many knowledge in Islam that we can study and learn. But I wanted to focus on things that combines a little bit of all, but focuses more on the belief of Muslims and Islam. And so I wanted to, I, I will take the methodology of, we have a book. And this book, my mentor and Sheikh has published, and it was, it's, a, it's a wonderful book. It has many ayat and many hadith and much benefit to the Muslims. It, it's, it consists of 39 hadith. And these 39 hadith, they talk about specifically about the belief of a Muslim. What do I mean by belief of a Muslim? The first thing that makes you a Muslim is what? Shahada. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, ashadu anna Muhammad. This statement is not just a statement. The statement requires us to move and act upon it and to avoid many violations of this statement, a shahada. I bear witness that there is no one worth worshiping but Allah. So you have to be very cautious that worshiping, we have to understand what worshiping is. And this is what's going to come in the coming classes. We're going to understand what worshiping is. We're going to understand what is our duty towards Allah. And we're going to understand what should we avoid when we talk about worship and when we talk about belief. Because worship can be things that is act, like your salana, you finish your isha prayers. This is a worship. But is that it? Is that how we just worship Allah? The answer is no. There are worships in tongue by saying, and there are acts of worship with action, like salah, and there are worships in even the heart. Even your heart is worshiping Allah. So I will talk to you about all these three categories, categories of worship and how should we apply it and what should we avoid in these acts of worship. So this is a method of the ulama. Many ulama, even I think you've heard of Al Arba'in Nawawi. Al Imam Al Nawawi published a book called Arba'in Hadith Al Nawawi. Arba'in Nawawi Hadith. This is a, a methodology of the ulama, how they wanted to spread knowledge. They used to make, uh, compile 40 or 39 hadith or ayah that is related to a specific subject. Imam Al Nawawi started this. And by the way, subhanAllah, this methodology of collecting hadith and spreading knowledge, it's actually based on a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In one hadith, the Prophet said, whoever learns 40 hadith, in, uh, or 40 of my hadith, then he will enter Jannah. SubhanAllah, this hadith is actually unauthentic. It's weak hadith. But the ulama worked on it. It was a nice methodology, not believing in it, but it's a, it is a nice methodology and, a, and an approach to publish books and compile hadith and to spread knowledge. And so many of the ulama, they went, uh, they, they took this approach, compiling 40 hadith or 39 hadith or 41 hadith about a specific subject. One of them is Imam al Nawawi. One of them is my Sheikh, Sheikh Anis al Mus'abi. He collected these hadith that we will study, inshallah. Another one was uh, Ibn Hajar al Asqalani. And I think Imam Ahmad also has a compilation of 40 hadith. Now, the interesting part is actually 39 hadith. So why do you call it 40? Because the Arabs, they have this habit. They round the numbers. If it's 39, they'll say it's 40. They just round the numbers. And that's why it's called 40 hadith. Wait, I, uh, I know, mashallah, in Japanese culture, time is like the sword. So it's 420 now. And we will conclude. Inshallah, in every lecture we have 20 minutes, and then we'll have some question and answer. It's 10 minutes, but if you if it's less than that, it's also fine, inshallah. So I will conclude with that. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. If you guys have any questions uh, or queries or anything like that, please feel free to, add, to, to ask me. Jazakallah khair, and I request any of you in this masjid or, or online people also they can raise their hands uh, yes since anybody any sisters or any brothers online you can raise your hand okay uh, assalamu alaikum sheikh Reza i have a question i teach islam to a uh, few sisters in uh, uh, in masjid 
so they are from uzbek uzbekistan family so they said uh, there is a culture in 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 uzbekistan where the newly wedded couple they are given um it's like a you know a, a man, the the man um the the girl and the the guy both will be given uh, like a statue or you know uh, um, it, it's like a lamp like thing where allah is written and then muhammad is written so okay. girl will carry one and the guy will carry one and they will enter the house with that and they keep in the house in the main place or in the place where they have a special room so they ask me whether this is allowed in islam because this has become a part of culture and without like every you know they, and it's a big one they show, they show, she showed me the picture like you know it's a big statue mm-hmm. like of thing where mm-hmm. allah and muhammad are written so is it allowed in deen will it lead to any shirk later uh, so i i do i don't know what to answer there uh, thank you sister for your question and this is uh, actually a very important question as a matter of fact i i'm going to talk thoroughly about such scenarios but i will give you the answer alhamdulillah the, the what what they have been doing is i think you you've explained that it's a lantern or some kind of lamp or something and there is a name of allah and the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam see if we relate anything to islam saying that this is part of islam or they have a certain belief like i'm thinking now you told me that they have to enter it together holding it entering the house so i'm pretty sure that they have a, a belief behind behind this why would they do this because it's a, they think this is a ritual and it's re- and it's them mentioning the name of allah that means it's related to islam now if we say this is related to islam and they are doing it as a ritual they need to have a proof from the quran or the sunna that this kind of act actually does exist in islam otherwise it becomes a bid'ah an innovation not a shirk because shirk is associating something with allah this is they're not associating something with allah but they have come up with a new kind of approach and they said this is islamic and why do i say i think and i'm i, I don't know, yeah i'm pretty sure and i think that they think this is islamic or it has a blessing or it brings them good life or anything because they have mentioned the name of allah in that lantern if you have told me that they just part of the uzbek culture they have a lamp and they enter the house with it or they just it's a lamp and it, they design it in a way with got no connection to islam or allah or muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam then i would say it's just culture it's not religious you know what i mean i'll give you an example if a, if a lady now we all know this this is i think worldwide all ladies at their wedding time they wear a wedding dress and it has to be white right it has to be white طيب we say is this a bid'ah is this allowed or not allowed we say it got nothing to do with islam you want to restrict yourself with white because it's a cultural thing it's fine in my country the man has to wear a bisht you know the bisht right that uh, that black thing on top of the kandura if i don't wear it people will think what's wrong with this guy if getting married you know it's weird a cultural thing you have to wear it like is that a bid'ah is that wrong the answer is no why because it got nothing to do with islam but if i start writing allah in it uh this why are you writing allah anybody tell you well i know because it's a blessing ah uh, you said it's a blessing how is it a blessing who told you did you have a hadith you have a quran that says if you write the name of allah on your cloth or on whatever it becomes a blessing the answer is no then don't do it i hope i answered the the, the question clearly Yes, brother. Yeah, almost answered the similar way. Like, yeah, alhamdulillah, I clarified with you. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, zakum Allah khair. Yeah. But I have to, I have to point out something. In these situations, brothers and sisters, be very, very diplomatic and be very, very open-minded, because we all know culture is a very strong thing. Some people will, I'm sorry to say, they will reject religion because of culture. And I think we all know this. So we have to be very careful on how to. portray the message and, and communicate with them in a nice way so they accept it wallahu a'lam jazakallah khair wa iyyakum wallahi khair jazakallah khair